Uh, so I was uh, thinking diversity in terms of uh, uh, learners, uh, learning styles, teachers, uh, teaching styles, but also in terms of knowledge. Uh, it's uh, quickness. Um, I don't know if uh, anybody here in the room has already worked with the giant of uh, MOOCs, uh, uh, the global uh, MOOCs portal as ADX or Coursera. If uh, yes, you have experienced how quick, how fast are they in detecting learning needs and in building learning paths in order to meet this learning need. We are perhaps a little bit slow in reacting. Other relevant word is scalability. We are sure that we have to be able to assure the access to higher education to a huge number of, uh, of people, to a growing number of people in, in, uh, in next, uh, in next uh, years. Another word is sustainability. We all know that our universities are too expensive. Are too expensive in, 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 in this specific historical situation, but for sure, perhaps we, we, we are not able to cost less, but for sure, we have to think about how we can give back more. And this is, uh, this is possible. Uh, what happened in the US around 10 years ago, moving into Australia, very similarly to what happened uh, with MOOCs. And we began in Australia around three years ago, and we've seen the most extraordinary demand, not only from their universities to enter these online enabling partnerships, but also from students around the world who said that, you know, I've got my job, I've got my kids, I've got a whole range of other challenges in my daily life but I want access to a great university in the US, in Australia, but now increasingly in Europe. And this is an opportunity that our universities have today to not only extend access and create more opportunities for students who we otherwise would not be able to reach, but also to retain our competitive edge, to retain our position at the vanguard of the world when it comes to high quality higher education. Yes, short courses are great, Yes, informal experiences are really, really helpful, as I'm sure we've just been talking about in the earlier session. But what I really need are real formal, uh, usually postgraduate degree programs, uh, real revenue on my balance sheet, and real student numbers uh, from students around the world. And I think another driver here is not only innovation. How do I make sure I learn the lessons of other industries? How do I make sure I recognize the digital revolution? How do I make sure I'm doing what I need for students and everything that needs to happen in terms of blended and flipped learning in the classroom, but also what can I do to extend access to students around the world who might not have the opportunity to engage in my content in a face-to-face -face formal environment? Um, basically, money has to come from somewhere for everything you do you a tremendous source of, 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 of funds for many of us. I've uh, uh, you know, spent many years drafting money for you. The problem with EU is not the money, but the episodicity of the money. That's not a word that exists in the digital world, it's nearly that. Uh, in other words, you get funding for a theory, and then just when everything's going well, they take the money away. And there's a horrible scrabble as you move on to the next phase of funding. You end up with a lot of four box models, and with four box models, you've got to have a rigid line between the boxes. I won't go into, into all the divisions. Public and private, frankly, in England, we often say the difference between public and private is basically to do with history, and the difference between private, non profit, and private for profit is basically to do with how clever an accountant you have. Full time and part time, that's a whole nightmare. By and large, you always call the students full-time or part-time, depending on which will generate more money from the government. We all know that, so why not make that? That means that basically I offer the MOOC to you, um, to, to, to a student, who then comes to you and says, I think this looks really great, I think it is worth some of these CTS points, and you want the students, so you say that's not a good idea, as long as you come and do a master's deal. All other business models are marginal. Let me say that again. All other business models are marginal which doesn't mean they don't exist, 
but you can't really build a massive loop program on the margin of this area. And they're ex- explained in great detail in the deliverable. And well, the obvious kinds of things, including civic mission, including links to research, including special government grants from some countries, not too many, and maybe in Catalonia today and not tomorrow, from what we heard earlier. Um, so bear that in mind, and there are some of the names and models we talked about. But let's look at what's relevant to the country. This is my analysis. The false integration of the vocational sector with the UHD sector is a lesson I think we can learn. And some countries actually have integrated the policy regime, like Ireland, like uh, Malta, and the two places. I think we should be like Austria in that. 